Page Object Models in Protractor And once again, this particular video I have split it into two parts, part A and part B since this part will have a lot of discussion and if we just continue in the same video it's going to be really confusing so I have split this into two videos, part A and part B so let's quickly get started Page Object Models so page object models is mainly used to reduce the number of duplicate codes which does the same operation. So again this concept has been brought from Selenium and since we are actually working with Selenium even though we are working with Protractor, it is really really an important concept to work with page object model because this is a very very proven and neater way of writing the code and maintaining a large number of project or bigger projects and it has really really worked with Excel automation channel we have so many courses where we discuss about page object model a lot and page object model maintains the object in a separate class files or you can work with separate ts files here where it is much easy to maintain for each and every page and you can use that particular page object to be invoked from the caller page so it improved readability of code and will have a handle of each page using its instances and it establishes a relationship between each pages directly in code so that performing an operation in one page will return another page uh, can maintain page object model so which is really really a awesome thing that you can do in page object model so if you ask me how our code is going to look like right now it's going to look something like this as you can see it is much easier and much neater than before so you can see that for opening a browser we have this browser.get within the open browser method and we have a get text method which is going to get the text out from a control using the get text method and there is a home page so basically this home page class is going to be holding all the elements which is going to be driving within that particular page and you can see that the open browser method is not kind of really fitting in here because the open browser is going to be very generic again those things we'll be discussing later while we discuss about hooks where we're going to put all these generic things like opening a browser opening a connection string or opening the data sources and closing the browser into that hooks so basically we're going to put all these methods over there but as of now just bear with me we are going to work with the uh, page object model without discussing hooks so that's the reason i'm just putting all this in here so let's quickly see this in action and understand how things work so for that i'm going to flip to vs code all right so this is the same project once again welcome back so what i'm going to do is i'm going to create the page object model so as i before said so i'm just going to create a new folder this time and let's call this as pages basically this pages is going to hold all the page required for my application. So basically our application uh, has not very big uh, pages in here. It is have, it's going to have a home page and then there is a course detail page. That's it. So there are only two pages available. So writing page object model for this kind of application is much, much simpler. So it's really worth it to write it right now itself because maybe later this application is going to be developed and you may end up with a lot of pages so if you start with a small thing it is very good and easy to maintain while the application is growing as well so i'm going to say this is going to be a home page uh, that you have saw before and then there is going to be uh, one more page which is going to be the course detail page so i'm just going to have hold what is called as a course detail page and i forgot to mention ts because it's a typescript file so dot ts and you can see instantly it is compiling which is super cool and in this home page i am going to hold our home page elements so basically first of all i need to import the uh, namespaces or the packages within the uh, within the class file so the first thing which i'm going to import the class is going to be the protractor itself so I'm just gonna head over to our first test spec so I'm just gonna copy this code completely and I'm gonna paste it over here there we go and then I'm gonna write a class again I'm using an export keyword there so export is mainly used to say that this particular class is available to other classes if you have a import uh, statement or uh, the heading as you are doing in here right so again these things are we have already discussed in our TypeScript fundamental video series which is available in Udemy as well as in YouTube 
So please go ahead and watch there so that you can have a clear understanding of how to work with TypeScript, right? So I'm not really gonna deep dive into these basic concepts of TypeScript here. So I'm just gonna say export class homepage and this homepage is gonna have some methods. Before writing a method, first of all, we need to write the object identifications as well. So as you go to the first test specs, uh, you can see that we have in headings. So I'm just gonna quickly grab this and then I'm gonna paste it over here. So this is gonna be like headings. So I, I need to remove this var. It's not gonna be var. All right, there we go. So this is gonna be uh, one heading basically. And if you need a lot of headings, of course, we have another mechanism of identification as well. Uh, which I'm gonna put it over here. So let's say if I go over here, we have this particular heading. So I'm just gonna copy that or maybe cut this code because we don't really require them anymore. Just wanna make this particular piece much cleaner. So I'm just gonna paste it over here. So this is gonna be uh, for one heading, which is the Selenium Framework Development Course. Uh, heading and this is going to be a collection of headings so it's going to return us all the headings right there we go and this is identified using CSS which is okay and then methods so basically I need to write a method for opening a browser for now with, I'm gonna put this in the same page so uh, let's call this as open browser something like that and uh, this particular open browser is going to be holding this what is called as browser dot get and here it is going to be the url so basically uh, i'm just going to say it's a string type and it is a url oops it's a url string all right so uh, you can see that I'm writing everything in a strongly type. Uh, that's why the TypeScript itself is very, very uh, handy. So I'm just gonna use the same pattern, kind of uh, coding practice, but yeah, it's very important that you do like this. And then let's say if I want to write a method, uh, which is gonna return me all the headings. So we have already written that particular piece of code in here. So this particular piece of code, so I'm just gonna cut this code and then I'm gonna paste it over here and I'm gonna call this as get all headings uh, as the uh, method name and for that I'm just gonna paste this particular line and you can see that I'm getting a bulb symbol there so it says do you mean the instance member is this headings of course yes so this is the this headings so add this to the uh, variable to be resolved See, Visual Studio Code is much intelligent enough to tell us all the basic information which are is required or it can be resolved by itself. This is really cool. And you can see, compare the protractor writing code in JavaScript compared to TypeScript. You can see that if you write the code in the JavaScript, you don't really have such a great intelligence or intelligence of writing the code even in the IDE. But whereas when it comes to protractor, there are so much of uh, help if you write only in TypeScript. That's, this is really, really cool, right? So this is the another method. And the final method I'm gonna do is to click the heading. So let's say I'm gonna click heading, uh, or maybe click the first heading, if that's the one. And then I'm just gonna uh, maybe just click this particular heading. That's uh, gonna be much easier. So this dot heading dot click, there we go. So much easier. So this is, one of the ways of writing the page object model. So this is the page, this is in the home page. And uh, if I go over here to the fastest spec, you can see that I can just get rid of all this code right now. So maybe I can just delete everything. Uh, there we go. I can just write something like this. I can just uh, write something like home page and I can just create a page, uh, maybe home page and then new of home page uh, to get the object identified and then I can start working with it but right now I don't really have a home page so if I see the bulb symbol there you can see that it is showing us the information that import home page from the 
pages of the home page this is really really awesome right now because these were not available before even in visual studio code but right now it is resolving automatically as if like a visual studio ide so this is really cool so i'm just going to add and you can see that the import statement has just happened and it says it cannot find name home page so maybe i can just change this to maybe what, bar something like that so there we go and uh, it's not the home page type because there is no such thing what i can do is maybe i can just put this uh, globally uh, within the uh, describe function so that it can be accessed even in the different uh, it statements so maybe you can understand why it is in a minute so i'm just going to put that there and save it and let's come in here for the home page oh, let's say home page and if i want to open the browser so you can see there is something called as open browser method and here i can just pass the url which is of a type string so you can see that this is the power of a typescript itself so it tells what type it is so basically you can just type uh something like http colon double slash it's going to be i guess it is local host colon 8808 uh, slash there we go and i'm just gonna close this so this is gonna open the browser then let's say i'm gonna get all the headings so i'm just gonna say home page dot get all headings you can see the power right right now with the page update model we can just access all the methods as if we are just writing a very very simple code but behind the scene there are so many things happening but still it is super cool and then get or click uh, the first heading so for that i'm just going to do like home page dot click first heading there we go so it's going to do exactly the same thing that we did before but right now using page update model so i'm going to save this and you can see that the code is much neater way uh, and it is much readable right now so now if i go to this place and if i run this particular test let's see what's going to happen so it's going to open the application there we go it just performed exactly the same thing as like before and passed the test right so this is how you can write the test using page object model but now wait a second is there a way that we can improve this page object model in a much different way like what we have right now so or is this the best practice or industry standard of writing the code we'll discuss that next